The Florida Power and Light Company reasoned that a drive to improve the quality of its service to customers would be good for business and good for its image. They worked hard for their Deming Prize. The decision was prompted by the news that a Japanese power company, Kansai Electric, had won the prize the year before. The Deming Prize had never been offered outside of the country of Japan, so it took some doing with negotiating with the Japanese to get them to offer that opportunity to us. Once they had said that, uh, yes, you will be eligible, you may apply, we think that you've made significant improvements in, in your organization and have demonstrated the real uh, quality process application, we set about training the organization in a, in a way that we have never trained before. Every one of the company's 15,000 employees was involved at some stage of the quality improvement program. Listen to the man who actually does the job is an important Deming Nostrum. Meter readers have a high accident rate. The men pointed out that many injuries came from dog bites. The meter readers suggested the solution. A portable computer now tells them which houses to beware of. To win the Deming Prize, you need continuous improvement, and other ideas were forthcoming. They introduced binoculars for the more scary assignments. The meter men were at the sharp end, literally. Because they were consulted, accident rates fell. If you do not seek continuous improvement in all that you do, you really have not implemented a true quality process. Quality improvement means there is continuous improvement. You have to do continuous organizational self-assessment. A good example of this is the campaign to reduce power cuts. These are often caused by trees falling across the wires. Intensive tree pruning reduced the number of power cuts dramatically. But even more power cuts were avoided when foresters analyzed the growth rate of different trees. By concentrating on the fastest growing trees, they've reduced power failures using the same men and equipment. Despite winning the Deming Prize, Florida Power and Light doesn't follow all the doctor's orders. One aspect it has steadfastly ignored is Deming's opposition to performance-related pay, point 12 of the 14 points. Yes, we were aware that that was one of Dr. Deming's cautions not to do. Uh, we have always believed that if you're going to be successful in keeping your employees informed, if you're going to be successful in giving them uh, guidance and coaching on how to do better if, if they're having difficulty in performing. And certainly the most important part is if you're going to recognize your employee for doing a good job, we couldn't find a better way than having these performance appraisal sessions. Ranking comes from failure to understand variation. To understand that of two, three, ten people, two, three, or ten divisions, one will be at the top and one will be at the bottom, no matter what. <clears throat> the question is, what do the differences mean? That requires knowledge. The differences may not mean anything. One of Deming's uh, theories is that you shouldn't really reward individual performance, you shouldn't pick people out, you should drive fear out of the sort of competitive workplace. Um, now at Ford, you did reward on an individual basis. Why? Yes, for, uh, well, in, originally because everybody else did it. <laughs> it's just a, a built-in pattern throughout, uh, let's call it the developed Western uh, countries. Uh, but I, I do think his point is one that uh, should be given a lot of thought and uh, there should be consideration toward moving to uh, reward systems that emphasize the uh, results of the team rather than the individual. One more, step right up here. Only one more, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now what are we gonna do with you? At his seminars, Dr. Deming illustrates his ideas on management with an elaborate charade called the Red Bead Experiment. Don't get close to willing workers. Deming plays the crusty old manager of an imaginary factory. Which one of you is average? 
From the audience, he recruits six willing workers and three quality inspectors. He sets them to work. The material comes in in a vessel. Unfortunately, this incoming material has some red beads in it. Your job is to make white beads. Are you clear? The joke is at the expense of management. Deming shows how willing workers can never make quality goods, in this case white beads, in a bad system. Quality inspectors make no difference. As long as there are red beads in the box, the workers will fail. Return the beads, same motions. Now it takes the paddle in the beads, not on the beads. The paddle is a wooden block with 50 holes drilled in it. The trick is to fill all the holes with white beads only. Airwork to inspector number one. On his first day on the production line, Johnny's work is only contaminated with five red beads. He's easily beaten his co-workers. Now Deming shows how bad management can be fooled by figures. Johnny, our best worker, gets a merit increase in pay. No question about it. The absurd fallacy carries on to the second day of production. Johnny, on a merit increase in pay, our best worker, no question about it. <coughs> Carries the work to inspector number one. Nine. Smith. Oh. The raise went to his head. <laughs> <laughs> Got careless. This is what Deming means by understanding the causes of variation. Western management, he says, has failed to grasp cause and effect. The red bead experiment ridicules competition in the workplace. Incentive schemes like performance-related pay, fear schemes like short-term contracts are revealed as illogical, plain wrong. Deming believes we need not competition, but cooperation. Isn't it competition that made this country great? No, it's cooperation. Competition is ruin our ruination. We've been on the decline for decades. We're on the decline. The decline will continue till we learn. Whether we'll learn, I don't know. We make it almost like a national religion for competitiveness, but that's not how we make our gains. That's not, when we go see what is actually happening, this teamwork and cooperation. You know, we won the West. Well, all the farmers got together and helped each other to build their houses or the agricultural service was teaching, everybody was cooperating and teaching everyone and so on. Uh, I think for every example you can give me of competitiveness, I'll show you a dozen examples of cooperation and how that really worked. A short while ago, a room at the American Statistical Association in Washington was dedicated to Dr. W. Edwards Deming. It's a collection of his writings and souvenirs, but it is incomplete. At 91, he has survived both his wife and his eldest daughter. There is still a job to be done, still continuous improvement to be pursued. He has a mission, but most importantly, I think that Dr. Deming is a living example of his own philosophy. He's continually trying to improve his philosophy of continual improvement. He is a lifelong learner. That's why his mind is still sharp. That's why he is still able to take this punishing schedule six days a week. I think he's a patriot in the old fashioned good sense of the word. He, he sees in democratic institutions and in the dreams of our founder, founders over 200 years ago that there was something very good and it ought not to disappear and that we are destroying ourselves and he doesn't want that to happen. I did not export to Japan American methods or practice. I took to them something new. Americans have still not learned it, nor the Western world. Nothing could stop them, not a thing. Some people have said you have to be in a crisis before you pay attention. The Japanese were in trouble. We're in worse trouble because we don't know it. The Japanese knew it, it was obvious. <laughs>